Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we'll cover a problem from impulse and momentum. In this question, we have two blocks whose masses are MA and MB, and they're placed on a frictionless horizontal floor and are connected by a light and almost inextensible cord. Its length can still change by a small amount of DL, but, but at the same time, it cannot extend, extend like an elastic cord, okay? Now the block on the right is given a velocity of u and it's given that the coefficient of restitution defined for the cord has a value of e. So we have to figure out the final velocity of block b. Okay guys, so this is how the initial situation is looking like. The block a has a velocity of u towards the right and in the current diagram there is no tension in the string okay so guys so this question is best visualized in the center of mass frame so if you guys don't know how to write the momentum in the center of mass frame i'll link a video in the description which you can go watch and then come back to this so in the center of mass frame the momentum of block a before the string tension starts acting uh, is going to be the reduced mass multiplied by the relative velocity between the blocks which is u and similarly in the center of mass frame even the block b is moving and as we know the net momentum in the center of mass frame should be zero the momentum of block b should be mu times u towards the left okay so this is the initial configuration in the center of mass frame and now as you guys can see as this block is moving towards the right and this block is moving towards the left the string must elongate by a little bit let's say dt second afterwards the string elongated by a small amount okay and again guys the extension I assumed is going to be infinitesimal and this is just to ex explain what's happening in the question so now as this is an inextensible cord the cord definitely does not want its length to increase right so tension forces of very high magnitudes will, will start being generated at different points on the string so it will pull on block a and block b and it will try to bring them to rest okay so let's say this state 2 that we drew over here is the situation where the stretch in the string is maximum so in this case uh, in the cm frame both of their velocities will come to zero okay so this situation over here that we just drew is a situation of maximum elongation so after this guys the tension forces are still acting on the blocks because the string is elongated right and it will keep acting till the string attains its original length the tension on both ends are going to be the same right so the same impulse acts on block B and block A. Okay, so now we are going to use the idea of uh, the coefficient of restitution. Okay guys, so uh, the word restitution essentially means restoration. So, so basically uh, in the context of a given problem, the, as the string is being elongated, we can uh, consider that as a deformation, right? So in this case, the deformation is basically the, st the stretching of the cord. So we can figure out the impulse of deformation by observing these two cases, right? So if you observe something, the block A, its momentum changed from mu u to zero. And who changed the momentum? It's the tension force of the string, right? So the impulse of deformation, which is the same as the impulse applied by the tension. So we can say that the impulse of tension on block, on either of the blocks is equal to the change in momentum of the blocks, which is simply going to be mu multiplied by u. And final momentum is anyway zero. So jt is simply going to be mu u. So now uh, if we just substitute it over here, we can get the reformation impulse as e multiplied by mu into u. So what this equation essentially says is that now the tension force will apply an impulse of jr on either of the blocks. Okay, so this is the restoring impulse. Okay, so now what we're trying to determine guys is the ground frame velocity of the block b. So for that we need to figure out the total impulse acting on the block b from state 1 to state 3. So if you observe something init initially the momentum of block b in the com frame is mu u towards the left and then it becomes zero and then an impulse of jr acts on the block b making its momentum e times mu u so in the block b the total impulse it's called j total that acts on the block b is going to be the change in momentum which is e mu u minus of minus mu u which is going to be mu u times e plus one okay so this is the total impulse that is acting on the block b so uh, now guys the in the video i linked I explained that the, imp the impulse due to a force is actually frame independent because the real force itself is independent of the frame so like for example the tension force is a real force so the force you observe in the ground frame as well as in the com frame are both the same so its impulses on either of the blocks will also be same in both of the frames uh, so now initially in the ground frame the block b was at rest so we can actually say that the total impulse on the block b is a change in momentum of the block b in the ground frame this is going to be the mass of block b times the final velocity of block b and uh, in as initially it was at rest and uh, after solving you get the velocity of b as this particular value let's also calculate the final velocity of block A. So in block A, the total impulse, as you can see, uh, is mu u towards the right initially, 
and finally it is e mu u towards the left. So the net impulse that acts on the block A is also exactly the same. Its magnitude is mu u times e plus 1 towards the left, right? But in the ground frame A itself had a velocity of u initially. So we can write the final velocity of block A as the initial velocity minus the total impulse which is mu u into e plus 1 divided by mass of a. I just wrote the impulse momentum theorem and divided by mass of a throughout. And after solving, you'll get, the, this, you'll get this value for the final velocity of the block A. So that was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.